Santa Maria, California, famous for its giant strawberries and luscious vineyards. It's ranked one of the top five places to live in the USA. But now it's known for a whole lot more. Today, Santa Maria is famous for multiple charges of conspiracy, kidnapping, and child molestation. It's home to the trial of best-selling musical artist Michael Jackson. But who are the people outside the courthouse, behind the fences, screaming for their idol and waiting day after day for a quick wave or hello? You got an innocent man sitting in this damn courtroom. When your heart is with something, you forget about sleep. Russian racism? Let's go! I support Michael Jackson. You're not going to stop me. You're not going to stop me. You keep them. I've been waiting for this moment for 22 years. You know, this is history. These are the fans who won't give up until justice is served. Go, me all the the world. And this is their story. When the Jackson trial began, Susie Mumfield quit her job playing Pluto at Disneyland and moved to Santa Maria to attend the trial full time. Sherry! You all out of the bathroom? She spends each day at the courthouse, then works a late yep. night shift at a local fast food restaurant so she can be there for Michael. Look, hurry up. Something happened to me. <laughs> I was a victim of child abuse. Starting from age three all the way up to 18, I just got beat. You know, looking at Michael and seeing what he's go through, it's like he go through the same thing. I can just literally say I walked in his shoes. Susie rooms with Jackson fan Cherie Wilkins. She was a kindergarten teacher for 13 years, and she quit her job to come out here to support Michael. And Cherie is a sweet, spiritual person, so it's like you really have to do a whole lot to make her mad. I get some of the nerves. A lot. Susie and Cherie make the rent by taking in paying guests, many of whom they've met that day. What's her name? <laughs> we have so many people coming in and out of here. Tamika! Tamika is her name. <coughs> oh, no, I'm trying to see, was that your, your name? <coughs> How long is she staying, Tamika? She said she's staying tonight. That's just $20, huh? so... We're here on credit right now. I mean, we're already backed up. Although they face eviction every day, the priority for Susie is planning her courthouse outfit. Oh, snaps. My girl ain't gonna know who would I hit him when I walk through with this pimp coat on. <laughs> Looking like his pimp mama. As Susie and Cherie get ready, hotel manager Michelle prepares the complimentary coffee and muffins. She is also a Michael Jackson fan. Best Value Inn is convenient here because it's 15, 20 minute walk to the courthouse. And this is Michael's designated route in and out of town every day. We are full this weekend. And, uh, oh, I would say probably half of the people who are here are fans. I'm the mother hen. We just take care of them if they need anything. Well, if they can't pay the rent, then They've got to leave the room. With the rent on their minds, Susie and Cherie head to the courthouse. The most difficult part is keeping up the hotel. If we can't afford it, then we will sleep in her car. But we're not leaving until justice is, is prevailed. Across town, Corey Bryson, a choir director and single mother of eight, is trying to keep it all together 
and attend Michael's trial full-time. I try to keep everything organized, and then I do have those some days where the night before, things get a little disorganized. Come here, I need my ID. Oh, man, come wipe your shade while we can't be late. Mm. Open your eyes and tell me, where'd you put it? Remember in the drawer? The days that they have the lotto, you have to have your ID if you want to get in. I don't want to be late. Oh, my God, I can't be late, and I got to get there, and I got to have my ID to get there. In a way, it's a little hard for my family. I do neglect some of the things, like some of the housekeeping and... The kids and my boyfriend do get mad about that, so I've been trying to keep it all together. Corey and fans like Susie and Cherie must get to the courthouse every morning by 6.30 if they're to have a chance at getting a seat in the courtroom determined by a public lottery. No ID or passport. There will be no talking. You cannot communicate in any fashion when you're in the courtroom. 737. Yesterday I wasn't able to get in because there were 75 people here. They only picked 45 tickets. Six, nine, five. And my ticket didn't have the number. <laughs> Six, seven, four. Go, 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 go. Here. Go. Thank you. Six, seven, nine. Last ticket. Seven, two, four. Three, four. Over here. <laughs> Today, Corey is in luck. Even though it will mean being in court all day and falling behind on the housework. Not all the fans want to get into the courtroom. BJ prefers to wait outside so he can cheer on the defense team as they arrive. Let's go, defense! Let's go! Estranged from his parents, BJ dropped out of high school and bus cross country from Tennessee for Michael's trial. I was on the Greyhound bus for five days from Knoxville, Tennessee. I couldn't brush my teeth, I couldn't take a shower. It was horrible. Being a Michael Jackson fan is my full time job. He says in a song from Will You Be There, he goes, in my darkest hour, my deepest despair, we still care we be there. And this is why we're here. Because we're standing up in his darkest hour, and we know he's innocent. Every morning, Michael Jackson must arrive by 8.30. The arrival of his motorcade is the high point of the fans and BJ's morning routine. <laughs> I was in a foster home, and I never had a dad myself. Michael's like the only person in my life that's never left. I just see all that attention Michael was giving me! For British University student Sam Davidson, the lottery is a bust and he doesn't get in, even though he skipped exams to be here. It's just a shame that my exams fall in line with uh, Michael's uh, court appearances, you know, but uh, my priority is Michael. Michael means to me uh, a lot more than, um, <laughs> Michael means as much as my family do, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, sorry. No, I just feel a bit emotional, sorry. <laughs> um, Michael does mean a lot to me, you know, um, he means as much as my family does, and, and I'm not, you know, to me that's, uh, means more than anything, Michael's given me something that no one can take away from me, you know, uh, if he's guilty I'll be bitterly disappointed, but, if he's, if he's guilty, then I'm going to just have to accept it, you know? Each day, court is in session for six hours, and for the fans left outside, there's nothing to do but wait in the hot sun until Michael's departure. <laughs> it's hot out here right now. It's horrible. you got to put your foot there. <laughs> what? you got to... Oh. You, gotta... you guys want some cookie or anything? Oh, take it. There's two of them. Where did you get some to make Jack in the box. Is it around the corner? Or is it right? Um, it's just down Main by the freeway. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I met my partner in New York. Um, I've got a gay her. She's a Michael fan too. I met her in um, Madison Square Gardens. When you know when Michael was performing with NSYNC at the MTV Video Music Awards, I took a real liking to her. So I was like, hey, you know, I like this girl. So we moved in together in London. I got to credit Michael for that. You know, she's right in the courtroom, <laughs> and I'm not. <laughs> so you know. So the way it goes, though. I hope she's having a good time. I'm happy for her. The hours pass slowly until 2.30 when court adjourns and Michael's fans are there for his departure. Love you, Michael! And to harangue government prosecutor Tom Sneddon, who has been trying to bring Michael to trial for 12 years. Arrest Sneddon! Arrest Sneddon! 
Arrest Manning! I was watching the news when Michael Jackson got arrested a little over a year ago, and I hadn't thought about him very much since I bought my bad cassette when I was 10. (laughs) I decided to sort of do my own research. Everly Horner didn't consider herself a Michael Jackson fan until she wrote her master's thesis on the star. I not only became convinced that he's innocent without a doubt, I began to admire him greatly and I started to listen to his more recent music and I I thought it was beautiful. As the afternoon wears on, tempers flare between Jackson protesters and fans, and sometimes it gets personal. Go to hell! Shut up! Go to hell! Shut up! Shut up! You need to chill a little bit. There are these two women randomly like, "Hey, you're crazy!" I was like saying to the cops, "Come over here! This girl's crazy! She's such a freak! Look at her! She's shaking!" You know, I'm like, "Oh, did her medicine run out of her?" And I just turned around to them and I was like, "Like, you know, you're being mean." When she sat on the curb and cried, I just came up and gave her a hug. That's all I could do. And just I just told them those people were stupid because they are. They should have did that. I think it did bring our friendship to another level. In the real world, people are going to, you know, be mean to you. That's a reality. BJ's mom threw away all of his Michael Jackson stuff and told him, if you go out there to Santa Maria, you know, like, you're disowned, basically. Evelyn's the best friend I've ever had. I really enjoy being around her. I'm so happy I met her, and I hope we stay friends even after this child's over. BJ has not only found a friend in Everly, but also a patron. They've become roommates and Everly is supporting him. We're going to the King of Pops throne, to the Neverland Bridge. Once Michael has left the courthouse, the race is on. The fans drive to Neverland Ranch, Michael's home, 30 minutes away, hurrying to be there before Michael arrives. Everybody is welcome. Come to this place called Neverland. It's like a world where no drama, no drugs. It's just a world of happiness. Neverland's a very uh, spiritual place, you know. I guess you've got to kind of be a fan to experience that. But since the trial began, the gates of Neverland have remained closed. Hope lingers that one day soon, they will be opened again. I feel like when I walk in there, I'm going to see just beauty and peace and just happiness in a never-ending land. (laughs) I've been going through cancer treatment for seven years now. When I was 16, that's when I first got sick, and I grew up all of a sudden, overnight. Nairi and her mother are the first to arrive. Nairi is a lifelong fan whose fight with cancer has prevented her from coming to Neverland until today. Listening to Michael Jackson's music makes me feel really happy. When I'm in the hospital for months, you know, his CDs are always with me. Your wish come true. (laughs) Nairi hopes this will be the day she finally gets to meet Michael. I'm just gonna hang out until he gets here. This is where he drives through every day. This is my Michael Jackson Ultimate Collection. My brother got it for me for Christmas. And my goal is to get an autograph. What's up? Here. BJ, Everly, and more fans arrive at the gates to welcome Michael home. We love you! We love you! We love you! At 3.30, Michael arrives, and Nairi is engulfed by other fans. We love you! Please, go by start my bone marrow transplant. Please, Michael, I'm going to transplant next week. We'll work tomorrow. We'll work something out. Please, Michael, I come tomorrow, please. I got it. I'm shaking. Never leaving this out of my sight. At first, I just saw him, and he was sitting in the back, and everybody just, like, bum-rushed me, and then the girls were yelling, well, don't give him a sob story, and and I was so angry with them. I'm like, it's not a sob story at all. It's my life. (laughs) With Nairi achieving her lifelong dream, another day at Camp Michael Jackson winds down. Yes, Lord. Cory leads her family in choir practice at their church. 
Susie starts her shift and works until midnight. Yesterday was cross-examination. Did you see uh, how brilliant Mesro did? And the rest of the fans settle in for the night. Yes, my This is Michael, and I sleep with him every night. <laughs> I understand. He's watch over his parents and his family and Chris, Paris, and Blanket. I come to you. As Susie as says a prayer for Michael, the fans get a few short hours of sleep before another day begins at Camp Michael Jackson. Just move forward. In Jesus' name, amen. It's another day at Camp Michael Jackson, and the fans are now in the second month of their vigil, hanging on for a glimpse of their hero, however fleeting. You can tell this is for Michael. Seven, eight, nine. Eight, zero, zero. Eight, two, two. Nine, one, zero. Once again, Sam does not win a seat in the lottery. Instead, he and the other fans turn to the cameras that have begun to focus on them as media curiosities. I don't know he's innocent, but I believe he's innocent. Because they know this shit is bullshit. They know this family in here lying. Some reporters left crying during the video. I'll be here every day to support Michael. Because we all know Michael never did nothing. Surrounded by so much media attention, the fans realize they have a powerful voice. Yeah. Talking about what's the point? The point is, you got an innocent men sitting in this damn courtroom every single day sure listening is. to your sure life. Yeah. At one point, you said, what's, what's the, the point? point? What's the point? What's the point? What is the point? What is the point? Like, is this this That's the point. Yeah. And then that what questions annoy you the most? Yeah, why, why are you here? here? Why are you why? Afterwards, the fans adjourn to a nearby coffee shop for breakfast and to dish the dirt. The worst question that I have received from the media is, do you think any more fans are going to show up oh, today? <laughs> yeah. The question that annoys, well, what annoys me the Why most is when they incredulously say, do you have a job? Oh. <laughs> you know, make it seem like Instead of asking me why I'm here, it's right. like, oh, I'm just out here just to stand because sure. I just did it. Sure. No, mine would have to be the one that annoys me the most. What would you do if he's convicted? They're not following the case. If they were following, they would never have that. Stupid. Then I'm like, are you yeah. Well, but that's the thing. The fans Hi, Susie. already know something. Excuse so me. Right? Excuse, excuse me. <laughs> the question I would like to be answered, I mean, asked by the media is, when is you and Michael Jackson wedding? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Back at the Best Value Inn, Michelle eagerly anticipates her favorite morning event. I am a Michael Jackson fan. He does pass by here. This is his designated route to and from court each day. So my husband and I stand out on the curb and wave to him each way. When we first started coming out for Michael, it was our excuse to come out and pull weeds. And then we'd be out here while Michael was going by. But obviously by the looks of the weeds, they're overtaking us. <laughs> he rolls down his window and waves. If we're not paying attention, his driver honks to get our attention so we can wave. Here he comes. <laughs> He'll slow down. Is yes, he is. Down? Yep. Yep, there yep. he is. Have a good day. Have a good day. That's all we do. And we wave at all of them. We wave at the officers. Yep. It's Makes our day. Fun. Now when they get out, we'll go back out there and do it again. That starts our day off on Every the last day. Now we got to go back to work. My husband and I are going to try to go out to Neverland, and we want him to sign our book of Michael Jackson fans who have stayed at our motel. He's guilty! Your son sucks. Your son sucks. Back outside the courthouse, BJ is becoming increasingly vocal with the Jackson protesters. Stand in the racist. Stand in the racist. 
God is going to make Sneda burn in hell. He's not going to bless him. Sneda's going to burn in hell just like his followers. <laughs> he yells and everybody gets mad. Yeah. Because when he yells, all the cameras turn towards him. I know. And it's not the fact that they're not on everybody else, but it's just like, you know, yeah, that's the only shot. image. That's the only image that they see is like the sky. And he's like, <laughs> but sometimes instead of shouting, BJ takes a more strategic approach. Officer Ben! I'm not allowed to put that sled in sucks, why can he put that double sled in? He has every right, just as you have, to put the signs up that say Michael's innocent, that Michael is this or that. You're entitled to your choice. Let's go, defense! Let's go, let's do this! <laughs> Thanks to her doctor canceling an appointment, Nayiri has a reprieve from chemo and decides to spend it with her mom outside the courthouse. Michael Sachs! Michael loves anal sex! Sony sucks! Sony sucks! Michael loves anal sex! I was shy at first and then I just started shouting with everybody else until so I can cover that other man's voice. <laughs> Michael Sachs! Peace out. Did he molest you? Peace out. Then you don't know, so don't no. speak. I'd love for him to try. I'd beat his black ass. Oh. Well, he'd beat your white ass. But Nayiri's voice is no match for the mob of anti-war demonstrators who now show up to protest that the Michael Jackson trial is taking attention away from the war in Iraq. Life is priceless! 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 No more war! No more war! People are dying! Though the Michael Jackson fans are many times outnumbered, they're not so easily outshouted. Wars all coming from the issue. same thing. Wars Wars are the larger the issue. Thing. They're focusing yes. on this and not the war. They don't want to pay attention to the war. It's not true. It's not that it's simple. True. You don't Wars, know. Wars you are can't generalize issue. like this that. Is, is Michael is not more important. 15 tons. I'm not saying Shut up. Shut up. I'm very, a very anti-war person. Um, is some, is sometimes it seems like they're not respecting the fact that all of this publicity is here for Michael. We're all in this together. You know? Eventually, the demonstrators disperse with some words of support for the Michael fans. Give Michael Jackson his day in court! Give Michael Jackson his day in court! Give Michael Jackson his day in court! he, you know, tried to go into the real cause before he left, you know, so. And why, why choose this place of all places? There you, know? you go, because he knows this is the issue. Take, take, take your issue to the White House, yeah? Take it to Capitol Hill. There you go, here. there you go. You know? After the excitement of the demonstration, Sam feels his best shot for contact with Michael is to head off to Neverland. Kind of hoping that, um, you know, we'll, we'll get to see Michael. I hope he's going to stop, you know, at least for a couple of seconds, you know. Sam can't really afford to be here. He can only stay for a few more days before his money runs out. It's that you only live once, you know? I mean, I'm in so much debt from, I've got, I've got 18,000 pound debt for university. I've got um, four and a half thousand pound from my previous three Michael trips to the US. And this one set me back another thousand, thousand pounds, you know? So, but at the end of the day, if I was to die tomorrow, I would rather have gone to Neverland than to have achieved my master's degree, you know? Because um, again, ultimately it makes me happy. Flamingos over there. Are they real? No, they're plastic. Um, <laughs> are they real? <laughs> About a quarter the size. This is Neverland now, yeah? Fantastic. Can we get out? Hello? As fans gather waiting for Michael to arrive, special? they kill time with a dance off. <laughs> <laughs> Just as Sam finishes his routine, Michael Jackson's black SUV pulls into the driveway, and Sam makes his move. Thank you. 
We're always ready. Thank you for the music. Please step on the other side. I love you, Michael. I love you, Michael. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I was the first one to hold his hand, and I just held it for about five seconds all the way along, just pushing people out the way, going like that. And he wouldn't let go, and I was like, whoa. His hand is massive. He's like twice the size of mine, you know? Yeah. Oh, man, my heart is like... Oh, that has made my day. It's made my year. Woo! <laughs> Sam rushes back to the hotel in Santa Maria to share the good news with his girlfriend. You never guess what's happened. When you were in the court... Yeah. Now, I told everyone else, I said, if you see Jane, let her know that we've gone to Neverland. So we drove to Neverland, and he turned up, went in his window, looked right at me, shut my hand, he wouldn't let go of my hand. Wouldn't let go of my hand, and um, he looked right in my eye, and he said, oh, thank you very much, and, and I said, oh, thanks for the music, you know. But, uh, it was really good, really good. So I'm so sorry for not letting you know, but I couldn't because you're in the court, so it evens itself out. Where have you been? In court. <laughs> Oh, do you know what? I've locked, my, I've locked myself out. <laughs> You're welcome. What? Oh, here. We're going to have to get you a new key. They just made it for one day. Sam and Jane are wonderful. And they have a wonderful banner that they have made. This is the one that costs $300 to make. I'd like for them to bring their banner out here so we can hold their banner up in front of our motel when Michael goes by. After spending all day in court, Cory waits for her youngest son, Jason, to get home from school. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> the people that are going to the trial basically are putting their lives on hold. But see where you in this time. Number 22. Way in the back. <laughs> but I can still see. You know. Did the kid come? The who? The kid. Oh, the kid? No, he's not there anymore. Oh. Now they're just talking to the investigators. Feeling guilty for spending too much time at the trial, Corey tries to get her son support. Jason, so how do you feel about mom being gone in the morning when you guys leave for school? Uh, okay, unless you sign my contract. And if I forget to sign it, then you don't feel too good? Nah. It's a contract with school between his teacher, him, and me to make sure that he does his work every week the way he's supposed to for school. So I sign it every day when I check his work. Sometimes I do run out without signing it, and he has to run over to the court <laughs> to find me and I sign it. And if he doesn't find me, yeah, then he might have to serve detention that day. I was going to school and working. I decided to take a year off to just find myself and to do my performing arts. And I found I wasn't really that disciplined. <laughs> then I thought, you know what, I'm gonna start going to the trial and I'm gonna start going every day and I'm gonna start documenting this history that's being made. Here's Michael, the back of them. That's basically, basically all we can see is the back of their heads. And in my documenting and in my going every day, I became disciplined. Michael Jackson gave me the motivation because this man has taken art and taken it to the highest heights. And for me to be able to see that somebody has done that lets me know that it's possible to be done in my life. Beverly also feels inspired by her involvement with Michael Jackson. I'm making a documentary about the case from the fans' perspective. The fans tend to be really skeptical of the press or of, of cameras. <laughs> Stop with the pictures, for real. So I was a little bit conflicted about that, and I ended up making the decision within myself that, okay, I'm here as a fan first and a filmmaker second. <laughs> this approach has helped her win BJ's trust as a prime subject of her documentary. Tell me about your armband. My armband. This is Michael Jackson's armband. I got it from one of his family members. And it was a gift with the Billie Jean hat. So it's directly from Michael, so I'm really excited about that. So what are you, what are you about to do? I'm about to go up to the Santa Maria Courthouse and perform just so I can say, hey, it's nice to look at Michael, but I'm not here just to see him. I'm here to support him, too. Oh, yeah. Michael, I feel like he scares people because so many of the dualities that we have in, in culture and society, he 
complicates them. He complicates male, female, gay, straight, child, adult, all of these dichotomies that we're so invested in. And what I would like for my documentary to do is to sort of be that alternate vision. They found some more, you know, of his girly magazines in his office and, you know, just typical guy stuff. Recently, I, I inherited some money from my great-grandmother, and so that's a lot of what I'm living off of. But the process is turning out to be more expensive than she budgeted for. Where's the camera bag? With the documentary costs, one month, it was $9,000. When I saw that, I was sort of like, oh shit, you know? <laughs> I can't keep doing this. <laughs> the cost of being out here, it's definitely cost me over $50,000. I need to keep it under like $20,000 for the rest of the time. <laughs> As Everly's inheritance dwindles, she finds it difficult to support both herself and BJ as well. It's difficult for me knowing how to set boundaries with people like BJ. I was paying for everything for him. I was letting him stay with me wherever I was staying for free. He was doing work for me, though, for the documentary. He was filming and stuff like that. I just made sure that I was paying him enough of a salary that he could buy food and, you know, just sort of have his basic needs met. <laughs> Despite her shrinking finances, Everly picked up two more commitments, an orphan chihuahua named Uno and Cherie, who split with Susie. Oh, good that you're back home. <laughs> we missed you. After months of struggling together, Cherie could no longer stand living with Susie. Our personalities may not be best for a living situation, so we'll just leave that at that. Mm, about Cherie, um, it was, uh, you know, it was pretty much my fault. Um, I have a different personality than everybody else. In the spirit of Neverland, uh, nothing is supposed to ever go wrong with people. It's like clap on, clap off. It's like when I clap on, it's hard for me to clap off. Susie is on the way to a rally organized by the Michael Jackson fan club at a local hotel. Okay, let's go. Do you know where my keys are? Everly and BJ are planning on going just as soon as she can find her car keys. Keep digging, keep digging. You had them with you, did you? Did I? I, I, I remember you had them in your head and that's the bottom she put them in there. Did you put them in that drawer? A lot of my friends describe me as a genius of sorts who has trouble doing the basic day-to-day -day things. <laughs> I lose my hotel key all the time too. All my roommates will confirm that. Oh, yeah, I just called you guys about their lost keys. Um, we think. As a last resort, Everly decides to call a cab. 20 minutes? Uh, that's okay. Okay, so we'll, okay, great. So we'll just uh, be waiting in the front lobby. It's gonna take 20 minutes? Yeah. And then it takes another 20 minutes to drop. Well, that's still, that's the fastest we can get there. I was supposed to be there about five. What time is it right now? It's 5.10. Just a congregation, the fans of us perform to get the crowd and help them the atmosphere going so they're all ready for the next day, you know. Let me help the person behind you really fast. Suddenly, the celebrations are interrupted by a surprise phone call. Michael Jackson. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
God of the truth is on our side. Did Michael's promise that he will see them very soon mean that the gates of Neverland will open once again and their months of devotion be rewarded? Michael Jackson Fan Club is in town hosting a series of events, including today's candlelight vigil outside the courthouse before dawn. If you want to pick up an armband, they're back here in the back corner here. The armbands are like the one Michael wears as a symbol of his commitment to feed the world's starving children. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, I love y'all more. <laughs> These people are always trying to arrest me. <laughs> From his perch outside the courthouse, BJ has become something of a spokesperson. BJ, tell them what they got to do to get thrown out of court. <laughs> okay, they'll tell you if Michael will talk to you, y'all can reply, but don't listen to him because it's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people here that want to get tickets. We need your cooperation. This is Sam's last chance to see Michael. He must return to England tomorrow, and so far he has yet to get a winning ticket in the lottery. Then we won't do it, okay? Cherie goes in almost every day, and so I got a ticket that I'm going to give to her um, if, if it gets called, just so that I can increase her chances of going in, because she's here. She's been here every single day. Something that I didn't know about myself was how much, I guess, Michael could give to me. It's definitely made me a more spiritual person. At first, when there were hateful people would say hateful things, I would want to talk to all of them. Now, if I see people holding up hateful signs, I just, I just start praying, you know. I, I just, you know, I know that it's, it's some, something bigger than me is going on, and just sort of like accept it and, and try to pray for those people and try to, you know, pray for Michael and, and for the world. 797. I'm hoping, I've got, to get, I've got to get in the court today. I've got to. If I don't get in the court, I'm going to be so pissed off. 838. Eight. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 I've never seen anyone so excited to go to court before. As other fans win seats, Sam's chances dwindle. 890. Eight two six. Yes, thank yes. God. Seven eight six. Eight six seven. Oh, I got it. <laughs> BJ and the fans who didn't get in keep an eye on Corey's children as their mother spends another day in court. What did I teach you? And and we, we just handed out British, yeah. Don't let anybody to demonstrate fly. international support for Michael, the fan club has organized a display of flags from all around the world for his arrival at court. All the fans are there, except for Nayiri, who's been rushed to hospital. I had to go to San Francisco for really high dose chemotherapy when I heard about the whole rally, and I was grateful for all those people supporting, but it, it kind of broke my heart that I couldn't be there also. I really don't have an appetite. Whenever I'm not hungry, I always eat food, thinking, well, if I eat food, it's going to give me strength to go back to the trial. So every time I take a bite, I do it for Michael. As Nayiri looks forward to returning to the trial, the fans gather at the gates of Neverland. Today is a special day because the fans have contributed $5 each to buy Michael 1,500 roses as a sign of their support. 
Yeah. Yeah. It has his makeup. I'm gonna try to get it signed. Shut out of court and leaving tomorrow. This is Sam's last chance to see Michael Jackson. As word spreads of Michael's imminent arrival, security gets the fans to move back. Back this way. Everyone follows me back this way. BJ, get the crowd going, get some dancing going. Okay, moving up. The fans are on their best behavior, hoping if they don't rush his car, Michael will stop to accept the roses. It is so, 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 it is so. We love you, Michael. We love you. Look at Michael, look at the banner, look at the banner, Michael. But Michael drives past without stopping. He pointed to the banner. Then, as the gates close, his car stops. A few fans are allowed inside the gates to present the roses to Michael. But BJ is not one of them. Okay, give me the pain, give me the pain. Give me the pain. Do not get the hats. Do not squish the hats. I'll try not to, I'll try not to, okay? Just shout to him, Michael, will you sign the hat for me? But for BJ, it isn't enough. And the disappointment is overwhelming. It's not fair because I've been here since January 16th. And these people that come for the first day and got an autograph, I feel pissed off, actually. <laughs> BJ, I, I mean, I have shots of him for months, you know, just standing at the gates of Neverland, looking in there, and wanting so much to be allowed inside. He just wants to feel like he belongs someplace, and he wants to be allowed on the inside and not not be an outsider. <laughs> you know, I've seen Michael uh, so many times. Just to see him again so up close, you know, every time I see that guy, he's just, he just gets you know, in such a way that I, no other no other person could, you know. I'm at the courthouse sometimes, even when Michael's not, just with a sign supporting Michael. Can you not boo me? <laughs> just just to be able to just to have him look at you. He yeah, pointed yeah. to the banner as yeah, it, yeah. He, he went like that, and I said, Michael, look at the banner, even though he's seen it. I said, yeah. look at the banner, you know, and he looked, he, he recognized it. Come back tomorrow with no cameras, I don't know what that means. Oh my god! <laughs> What's this? Did they said to We're come back tomorrow with that. no camera? Because <sighs> they're going to make an announcement. Everybody be quiet! Just a minute. What, what, what? I'll have anything to say yet. Wait, I was going to go inside. Everybody. Are you sure? <laughs> I hope so. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but if, you know. <laughs> Once again, the fans are asked to clear the driveway in anticipation of a big announcement. Well, this thing how it's supposed to be PJ, you okay? It's just upset he didn't get his hat signed. I mean, I'm a fan, so I'm gonna. Sorry, I'm gonna just. <laughs> okay, I guess. Um... I think, I hope, I'm not getting this mixed up. Um, I think everyone's gonna be invited in. Yes! <laughs> to see Michael and, and have him acknowledge you is enough, but to, um, to, to be like, to never land is, is anyone's dream come true. He knows we travel a long way, he knows we spend a lot of money to support him, and he truly believes he has the best fans in the world, and, and, and we are. We went in and it was beautiful, it was so beautiful. It felt like Christmas or your birthday when you're five years old. I never thought I would go in South Gates. I never thought I would ever meet Michael. Dreams do come true. Dreams do come true. 
It's just a magic that can't be explained. Leave your problems at the gate and just go and just have fun. It's like a whole new world. Far exceeding my expectations this trip, definitely. Got a lot of great stories to tell when I get back. If I died tomorrow, I'd be a happy guy. I really would.